So for twin flames, I've set this up as an altar for this alignment with Uluru, the center of Australia. So this is some cards that I pulled to represent the energies in this powerful time of transformation that we are in. I will light the Palo Santo. So basically while I'm lighting this Palo Santo, powerful revelationary time, because the two serpents are now coming back into the center of Uluru and they hold the twin flame energy and there's a lot of people supporting what was interrupted quite a long time ago when this almost happened before so this is the reading I'm coming from Australia and we've just had these crazy bushfires and stuff on the East Coast on the side of the Divine Masculine there has been on the East it's like the devastation of the earth okay this is a twin flame reading this reading is based on the deep deep energies going on for January. This is some cards I pulled up during the Uluru alignment where energetically the two rainbow serpents were coming back together to meet in the space of Uluru as a part of the ancient prophecy to resurrect something in history that was interfered before where there was an interference so I created a prayer and a meditation for this just recently which I'll also upload so let's just get into this reading then so what came out after the main cards which I will get uh, this is the central energies and uh, what came up as at the base of it, which is like the work that is still to be done, was the emperor. This was at the bottom of the deck. We had the emperor, followed by the devil, upright. Then the magus, or the magician, reversed, followed by the hierophant, reversed, and directly in front of the empress. The empress and the emperor are facing each other. And this is what stands between them. So in the center we have the Magus or the Magician in reverse. So for me this is showing us a need to go inside for our power. Wherever our power was pushed on the outside and seeing outside through the 3D dimension as that having more power or giving our power away to external illusions we are now called inward to look into a new perspective it could all be seen also be seen like the hanged man but what we see here is this is the central energy it's a withdrawal or a retreat there is a withdrawal and a retreat for both the masculine and the feminine but for a good cause in order for us to become fully empowered and to really do the inner work to bring our, our inner work to a whole new level so the magician um, sorry we have the the emperor and the devil there so the devil devil is upright this is also showing us that the masculine still is in that karmic cycle of sorting out business but he's mastering it he's through the energy of the devil, the devil has been teaching him that, you know, like, these things are not satisfying. Anything that is, you know, you have to go down to the bone. It's about getting down to the guts 
and the, the, the deep, deep truth of what is truly going to satisfy you in this world. So the devil is a great teacher in this world of true value, true worth, and where that lies through showing us the bondage of the ego and the illusions that we cling to. And also, this is also showing that the, the, the masculine is understanding that even his bondage or wherever he's felt trapped is an illusion. He can free himself at any time. So he has allowed himself to be held in something because of his own need to punish himself in some way based on maybe some kind of a karmic history um, you know something deeper in the psyche that has chosen to take this punishing path with the devil through all the, the temptations the struggles the lack of satisfaction that the devil shows us through these egoic pursuits he can free himself at any time. And then above them stands the high priestess. So at the moment, what is why he is also mastering this devil energy is what I see here is because he has just above his head he has the the high priestess here. And that's his beloved, that's the all the light and the knowledge and the truth of the Divine Feminine that is guiding him at this time. So everything she has laid before him energetically through the frameworks and the keys she's left are, are very, very well lit up in his mind, which is why he's beginning and choosing to master the work of the devil to master his ego, to refine his pursuits, to shift and transform and knowing that certain ways of the world will never satisfy him. And the only thing that will satisfy him is an ultimate truth and a divine communion with that truth, with first the divine feminine within and then the resolution, the reunion, and the resolve with his beloved and the path of light. So this turning inward or this realization of a loss of power has really called all the energy back to ourselves. The Divine Feminine is very, very much on the masculine's mind at the moment. He she is still a very, very powerful light guiding him. Every little key, every little light she has left behind. And then above the feminine, we have the moon over here. But in front of the feminine, or the empress, we have the hierophant upside down. And this is like the overthrowing of doctrines that don't serve the highest good of humanity but also choosing not to take in any new information at this time because the Divine Feminine has gathered so much so much knowledge and her intuition is so deeply deeply connected to this alignment and this Divine Truth that she is now overthrowing she's looking at this and there has been a lot of distraction and you know different things saying oh you know like trying to deter her from the path but she sees it so clearly so she's choosing not to take in anyone who wants to speak about this journey negatively She's just not buying into it. She knows she's on a path. She's patient. She's, she's not into the rush of this timing thing that many people try to buy into of like when the union's going to happen. 
She knows that when the timing is right, it's going to happen. But she's in a really good place because she's actually pulled her energy back in from any master, from any um, masculine energy. You see all the masculine energy that sits between them. So at the moment, if you look at this, you see the emperor, you see the empress. They're looking at each other, but in between them is the work that's being done at this time. Is the work so that's it's being done at this time. This deep reverence and resolution and, and revelation of the fact that wherever there was people outside of herself because of all the masculine energy that were you know, leading her and misleading her into thinking different ways about the path, she's overthrowing that and she's choosing not to take in any information and to sort of keep with her intuition and her truth. But she's also pulled her energy away from the masculine with the revelation that she must go inside and the power is not outside of her. Whether as she's been a lot in this journey, there was a long time where she was avidly more curious about the masculine because energetically that is something that needed to, to play out in a way, to, to probe him, to serve that light at that time but now she's realizing that's done this is complete and it wasn't it got to a point where it wasn't serving her anymore so she, now she's actually more in a re, you know a resolve we have the moon here above her so she knows that this is a dark time of reflection but as we see with the scarab here the sun will return she knows that within this darkness and this time of reflection and self-preservation that the sun will rise again. So, the union energies, we have, this is, this is actually really, really beautiful what came up in the center here. So, let's go just to the left side here. So, this is the first card I pulled, which was the Princess of Cups. So this is the feminine's energy. So she's just holding her own nourishment. She knows her blossoming. She's coming to the place of joy. You see the dolphin and then the swan um, opening its wings behind her. So she's really thinking more at the moment about what her creations are and what she wants to bring into the world. And she's just really come back to herself and also come back to healing the inner child and the inner teenager and those aspects of herself like she's just doing a deeper sense of self-inquiry and she's more into self-preservation at this time and she is full like she's holding this cup and this shell and her concerns really are of the earth as well like of protecting mother Gaia and serving the Sophia codes through the earth and the beautiful planes of existence at this time that she came to do the higher work, the higher knowledge. And she's also reserving her emotions. But she also holds an open flower there for her masculine to say that if he does show himself, if he does return, she will be ready. Here on the masculine side, in the center energy, this is the heart space. This is like full on fired up, like his passions for his feminine. He is getting ready. He is getting ready to serve justice on this journey. He is fully fired up when we see this Knight of Wands. It's like, you know, he is becoming the king and his passion for his feminine has really lit up since this feeling of a possible loss of her or the fact that there has been a deep, deep surrender on her part has made him step into balance and to feel everything that he's been suppressing and to really light up about what really does light his heart on fire. In the center we have the Ten of Cups here, so that was amazing that that actually came up and then the 
the lovers just underneath and above that we have the sun so that just in the center of the these energies is just really really showing a meeting the ultimate truth we have the foundation which is the two coming together the twins for ultimate fulfillment the war the feminine has really come into her space in that receptive beautiful open water energy open full fulfilled fulfilled in her energy focused on her light focused on her creativity and all that she came here to create her swan song her absolute joy and the masculine is really growing into his path as a warrior of light and speaking the truth and coming to, into his deep fearlessness in all aspects of his life and his world on a personal level interpersonal and transpersonal and to have the sun card up above there fully fully sub supporting here is just like incredible it's like this is the true template of the twins to heal at this time so that's the central energies yeah which means this is the higher energies the ultimate truth so let's um and then this is the work that's being done between the emperor and the empress on the earth level on the 3d level and then um so we have courage i just pulled an extra card for the feminine so it's like just have the courage to continue doing the inner work the healing she's holding her inner child you see she's having the strength of a bear to protect what is hers and to attend to what needs to be attended to so then here which is behind the scenes which is the deeper emotions we have on both sides on the masculine side we have the prince of swords and the prince of cups and on the feminine side we have the strength card or lust and the five of wands followed by the four of pentacles so this is what the feminine has been doing this whole time inwardly she's been holding the heart high she's been so so strong in keeping the light and holding the light and staying true to the path and the five of wands here is showing that something is still incomplete she still feels the frustration of what is incomplete on the deeper levels she knows that this journey is not over she knows that all this power and strength that she has wielded to hold that love in that light in the true light of power and strength overcoming her the animal self and transmuting that into the higher love so that's another form of the devil in a way like the lust card because you know for the feminine she's also had a challenge of overcoming you know the temptations of lust and everything as well and and the inner questioning of do i go with another do i wait for my masculine do i follow the path you know so that's another thing that's being like unfolding and unraveling so the five of wands something is still incomplete and there is you know in some ways there could be like a desire for battle or, or desire like the inner battle really you know that sort of see, never ceases with the twins as we are pushed to continue on the journey and to do the work and to also realize how strong we have been and this is not all for nothing then we come up to the four of pentacles and in this deck this is 
very much about stability. So the higher mind is thinking she wants stability, she wants something that is sure, she wants something that is true. And then that's coming into the card of adjustment. So she is also finding her inner balance and calling, with calling the energies back into herself. It's been a really, really powerful revelation for her as well to hold back and to come into that balance, to know that balance, to know that she is the empowered one, the aligned one. So in that adjustment that with pulling the energy back into her own power, into her own court and focusing less on the masculine, she is coming into her alignment and then the eight of pentacles sits above the head over there. So that's a really positive energy for the feminine coming into her abundance. And then over the top we see the nine of pentacles in so this just shows that we're both pulling things into the physical. The masculine has had found the ninth pentacle, so he's been working a lot more harder in the material. Um, and then that's been good because he's also seeking what will truly fulfill him, what is the true fulfillment. And that's become his biggest point now, his pinnacle. So then above what's been going on behind the scenes with the masculine here is the Prince of Swords and the Prince of Cups. Let's go a little bit closer there. So this shows me that he has really, like this is on the heart level as well. So he's fired up, he's ready for battle. Like he's in the battle of coming back into his power as the king. And behind it is like a full deep revelation of his deeper emotions. Like really, like for there to be these cards that are like all masculine, like he's just really awakening to the journey on the deepest level. And look at this, he's getting all the support from the angels. There is like three angels. So this shows he's actually being really, really guided at this time. He's opening to that guidance. He's listening. And he is truly taking steps to cut away what is not serving his highest good. As he takes that sword and he brings everything to light. He's pretty much had enough, really. I think he's really, really had enough of being used, abused, pushed around. Um, I mean, he's, he's never going to be fully used, abused and pushed around, but because he is a beautiful, kind-hearted soul who serves humanity, just like the feminine. You know, people have taken advantage of him. So he's really now calling it out. He's calling people's bluff. And he has the support, like he's been guided through the heart of light to really come out. But on this heart level here, we're also seeing he is really feeling his emotions and coming very attuned to the emotions he was avoiding before. And the art is an alchemical balancing. So this is the beautiful reading that I got after doing the beautiful meditation with Uluru and this alignment that has been taking place on the 12th of January. And I also threw the dice and we have the eight here. And the eight came up and then the four and the eleven and the crazy thing about it is it all adds up 31 which is a four which is connects to 2020 which is the power of this year so then what we have here is the reading for that we have the cauldron for the fire we have the night sky we have the swamp for water and we have the meteorite so with the meteorite there's going to be a, a big revelation hitting and coming into the view of the masculine so let's read that 
So for the number four, which came up with the red dice and the element of fire, we have the cauldron. The cauldron that is always burning, keeping a warm home alive, fell on the feminine side in the higher aspiration. The four, like the four of wands we would say, because this is fire and it's a four. Act as an old cauldron whose familiar shape both contains and cooks together the many ingredients that make delicious nourishments and other useful concoctions. Using a trusted recipe that has stood the test of time, mix together the various component parts of your intended creation. Keep your hearth fire nurtured in a very steady and dependable manner. As you gently stir your thickening broth, remember to season it properly so that all whom plan on sharing it with will find it to their liking. So then we had the air element on the feminine side and the fire element. And we had the water element and the earth element on the masculine side. So he has a lot of the emotion on his side and shit is kind of hitting the fan, but we'll get to that point. So night sky. For the feminine, it's the hot cauldron in the higher aspirations and just bringing that cool night sky, the hope of the expansion of the universe into your heart. Be aware of the night sky and though you are a tiny but uniquely influential part of all that is, you are a co-creator of this vast mysterious universe and your beliefs have brought you to the present experience of reality into being. Take responsibility for where your life has brought you and do not blame outside causes for your troubles. Interesting, that came up in the reading, calling back the power from the outside. Hmm. Your hopes, wishes are being materialized into reality as you sleep, get plenty of rest and record your dreams as soon as you wake up for they are trying to tell you something about your process. So for the masculine, we have him in the swamp on his side. It's the eight, still a very powerful number here. Okay. Are you one of the few who can pass through the swamp without fear? Beneath the fetid, stagnant waters, decomposing plant life provides a rich breeding ground for the infinite number of strange organisms at the bottom of the food chain, which sustains us all. Feelings of anxious self-doubt caused by our encounter with our ever-present shadow side can weaken resolve and poison our relationships with suspicion. Until we feel that we can grow ever more inclusive of our experience, we will be afraid. So he's swimming through the swamp at the moment of the undealt with emotions. So that's what's happening really at this basic level. And he's, you know, coming to terms with a lot of that. And right next to that is the High Priestess, the Light of the Feminine, who has already gone through so much. So that is really what's bringing him so much hope, so much ability to stay strong through this and stay strong in his own progression of his own path forward. And getting through this with as much courage as he can show at this time. So on his side as well, we have the Earth... And we have the number 11, so there's an awareness of the twin with that number on his side. We have meteorite. You will see the meteorite fall out of the clear blue sky and be compelled to have a different attitude about what is and what is not possible in your life. It is most likely that you will be fortunate enough not to be struck by it but it will surely disrupt your everyday experience for a time. Elements never seen before or even imagined 
will be revealed and available for use. Your reaction to the unexpected will show you whether or not you are flexible enough to produce true and lasting change. So that just shows, you know, he's going through the swamp on the emotional level, having to deal with the undealt with emotions. And then there's been big disruption in his world with the meteorite that has um, struck to help him see things from a new perspective. And that was the other message I got from the devil being in front of him was just like, this feeling of entrapment, this thing where you felt like you were trapped and you could never really go forward to the feminine in a lot of this time kind of has been a choice as well. And, you, you know, you have the power to choose. Um, all the things that you've put yourself into, they've all been by choice. And maybe certain people have chosen for, for you but that is probably the way it's always been until you grow up and you grow up and be a king and then you choose for yourself. So this is a really big lesson that the masculine is learning at this time is just stepping into his power as a king, as an emperor and his true power. You know, he's been there before. He knows this power. But this illusion that he is um, trapped, that he can't change his reality, you know, is changing and he's starting to see that all it all it takes is walking through a new door. So I hope you guys enjoyed that reading. I, I thought it was pretty amazing and pretty powerful and very deeply connected to the truth of this connection and the path that has already been walked and what's happening at this time. So thank you, thank you for listening. So I see this as a deep remembrance coming back to the masculine of his origins and the original plan from the beginning of time when we created ourselves in this way. So it's like a deep impact and a deep awakening to where we have come from, from star systems, from our lineages, beyond this time and space. So the meteorite is coming from heaven, from the stars, to impact and awaken in a big way. <laughs>